that evil bastard. It was that man again, the embodiment of pure evil. Uh, his image is always there. He murdered millions and affected the lives of millions of others. Seemingly normal people living their everyday lives have a story to tell about his influence on their lives. That's why I thought my mother's story had to be told. There are few left and she was there with a story to tell. Mum was born in 1927, 90 years ago. Uh, it was quite the year. Many things were going on. Uh, when you think about it in retrospect, it's a completely different world. Lindbergh had made his first flight, uh, and people were still recovering from the horrors of the First World War. Um, but there was uh, also a lot of optimism in, in the air, and things were going on in many different ways. Cars were on the road, giant dirigibles were in the air, uh, and television was in its infancy. But things weren't always rosy. Uh, there was a lot of poverty, a lot of labor unrest. Still, there was room to live a beautiful, bucolic life, and that's what my mom was living with her family. Mom grew up in the quiet village of Twyford in Berkshire, a small village uh, west of London. Uh, the branch line from Twyford takes you down to the fairy tale town of Henley on Thames, famous for its boat races and uh, unspoiled Victorian uh, atmosphere. Not far from Twyford is imposing Windsor Castle and Highclere Castle, the principal set of Downton Abbey. Downton is a story that, in its later episodes, uh, set the social tone for Mum's generation. Mum's father, an army veteran who served in India prior to the First World War, was uh, the village policeman. Her mother, Harriet Phyllis, hailed from an upper middle class family. Together they raised six children, two boys and four girls, Mum being the youngest. Mum's earliest recollections are when she was four. She contacted TB from unpasteurized milk. I was in hospital for 11, 11 months. 11 months is a long time. Yes. Yes. Did you make good friends there? Uh, I made a little friend named Kitty Berry, and we used to sing together. So that was the beginning of your singing My days. My singing career. Mum's education was at the village school, an altogether forgettable experience, she says. School was not her thing, but she certainly had an affinity for the arts being drawn to dance and singing almost from the start. She particularly loved tap dancing, something she returned to much later in life. But unfortunately, at 12, Mum's idyllic life was about to end. When the war started, yes. my mother, I do remember my mother standing at the sink in the kitchen crying because the First World War had not been over very long, and my mother lost her brother in that war. So here we go again with another war. And she was worried because I had two brothers who were both going to be in the war, yes. One especially, and he survived. He was in the Eighth Army. He was in the desert, and he was reported missing. Mm -hmm. But apparently he got behind German lines and then was discovered again, I suppose. My brother was also at Dunkirk mm -hmm. and, and all the big battles. And right at the end, which he always said ruined his life, my brother was one of the first British soldiers to enter Belsen concentration camp. And it was awful. He never got over it. As the war progressed, the streets were filled with military vehicles and the air filled with aircraft, both friend and foe. Fortunately, Mum's village was spared the hell of London, although a German pilot did jettison his bomb on the local cricket pitch. And nearby Reading, although a large town and potentially large target, was only hit once. I remember the Blitz. Uh, luckily, where I lived, we only had one bomb, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, which unfortunately hit my sister's office, 
My sister was at work and when they heard the bombs coming, she, they flew under the table and it saved their lives. In addition to convoys heading south toward the coast, uh, there are sharp memories of German and Italian prisoners working on the roads and in the fields, and of the black American soldiers mom's mom would invite for dinner. And there's the wail of the banshee again, this time a friendly wail. The all clear signal tells us that the bombers have gone. Eventually the war came to an end. Jubilation erupted, and Mum even made the trip to London to join the ecstatic multitudes outside Buckingham Palace. A new world was dawning. The country was in shambles, but there were still opportunities to enjoy uh, the pleasures of peacetime. Mum enjoyed horseback riding and soon rediscovered her love of singing, even performing with Reading Amateur Operatic Society's uh, production of Bless the Bride. Singing would eventually become her most passionate artistic pursuit, one that would take her to performing at a high level in years to come. She also resumed dancing with vigor and even attracted the attention of the somewhat notorious Windmill Theatre up in London. I love to tap dance and, and I love to ballet dance. I did both those things. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. My teacher thought I would be good enough to go on the stage at the Windmill Theatre in London. Yes. But I took one look at the Windmill Theatre and said, no way am I going to dance there, because most of the girls were practically nude, and that was not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I could have done anything they did, because I was a good dancer. So I didn't go to the Windmill Theatre. <laughs> At London's Morden Park, Pathé News invites you to a front stall seat at the Film Stars Garden Party. It was the year's biggest get-together of Britain's who's who in films. The late 40s also saw a resurgence of the British film industry. It was time for rubbing shoulders with famous film stars at Film Star Garden Parties up in London. A th favorite pastime of my uh, mum's and uh, with her sister. My you... sister, Betty, and myself. We were film star crazy, of course, because we were young and foolish. <laughs> and we went to the film star garden party in London. You really want to know? Yes. <laughs> Sleazy. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't think much of them, actually, but we, we saw all the film stars that we knew from movies from way back then. Big disappointment. <laughs> Unfortunately, celluloid heroes couldn't pull Britain out of the gloom. Life was hard, housing was scarce, rationing would persist for years, and the shops offered little in the way of luxury. However, one magical thing did happen for Mum. She met Dad, a former Royal Navy pilot and lovely man, very much deserving of his own story. In 1951, they married, and in 1952, they made the bold choice to come to Canada, crossing the Atlantic on the steamship SS Neptunia. It was in February, which is a very bad month to go on the sea, and uh, I couldn't be with my husband. I, can, I don't remember why we couldn't be together, but I shared a cabin with another English woman by the name of Mrs. Bell, and because the sea was so rough, the waves were mountainous, no exaggeration, it was terrible. The lady I was with kept on saying, eee, because she was North Country from the north of it, ooh, but I can't swim. <laughs> and that's all she kept saying was, ooh, but I can't swim. Well, believe me, nobody could have swum because the waves were mountainous. Mm. The sea was so rough. They landed in New York City where a kind New York taxi driver, upon hearing my dad was a fellow Navy man, gave them a free lift to Grand Central Station, where they caught a train to Toronto. Of course, Toronto was far from the cosmopolitan place it is today. The city was under relentless gray winter sky, and news was dominated by the likes of the Boyd Gang, robbing banks all over town. Still, they quickly adapted to the new life. 
Dad quickly picked up a job at Avro Aircraft, and after bouncing around a couple of residences, they settled in Weston, bought a bulbous blue Pontiac, and in 1954, had me. They fell into a material good life, far and away better from what they left back in England. Eventually, we wound up in a nice West Oakville subdivision where in 1957, my brother was born. I remember it as a wonderful time. It was leave it to the Canadian beaver. Dad was a less wooden version of Ward and mom was a more vivacious and artistic June. They were the perfect parents. Life would still have its challenges, of course. The Avro Aero program would have its plug pulled. And after a spell with de Havilland, Dad would eventually move the family to the States, where he would continue to work on the aeronautics side of defense industry for years. Mum's singing career would take off, but that's another story. In retrospect, the events of war drove Mum and Dad's story as did the lives of most people of their generation. As one of life's ironies, I feel fortunate things panned out the way they did. I've been a very lucky man. Thanks, Mom. An English country garden. Oh, I know the first line. Da, 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 da. In an English country garden. Da 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 da